Okay. I can you read that? Read what? Bump? Boom? That's what it says? Pump? I thought it said pump. Pump up the jam? Pump, pump it up. Pump that jam. <clears throat> pump it Please up. tell me that was good. That enough. was such a long bit. Please. I, we were running out of material there, guys. Hello everyone and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and really tech related. Gen 2. I'm Garrett Bevins. And I'm Jonas Pilat. We're glad you're tuning into this week of Gen 2 and we hope you enjoy it. So let's talk about what games are releasing soon. Good afternoon, agents. Your mission is simple. Infiltrate the Frozen Coral Underwater Hotel and retrieve the blueprint of a powerful weapon. As Go undercover know, as the world's greatest spies in this tense multiplayer game of deception. Disguise as anyone, deploy an arsenal of high-tech gadgets or neutralize the competition. As long as you extract what the objective, no trick is too dirty when you work for Deceive Inc. Deceive Inc. releases for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on March 21st. Ah, good morning, Death. What a lovely day to be alive, wouldn't you say? Ready for another busy week in the afterlife? Oh my! Have a Nice Death is a 2D action roguelike where you play as an overworked death whose employees have run rampant, completely throwing off the balance of souls and his vacation plans. And in order to restore order, you'll have to grab your trusty scythe to show your employees who's boss. Have a Nice Death releases on Nintendo Switch and PC on March 22nd. Those are the two of the gaming releases upcoming. Now let's look at some other news. Elden Ring finally announced its DLC expansion, Shadow of the Erdtree which is in development. This was announced three days after its one year anniversary. The DLC is classified as an expansion. While that can mean many things depending on the developer, usually expansions are a step above smaller DLCs and significant content additions. At this time, the only clues we have are this photo and the name, Shadow of the Earth Tree, referring to the giant tree that looms over the entire map and itself is scalable later on. More information will be hopefully released soon. And that's all we got right now for news. Make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to not miss our future episodes. Now, let's continue on with the show and see what packs are all about this week. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Digital Digestion. This week, we're looking to a very notable side character who fights to the very end to save his planet. This is George from Halo Reach. George is a part of Noble Team, a group of Spartans deployed on his home planet of Reach. Funny enough, the name Noble Team is tongue-in-cheek in the way that everyone in fact is noble. Honestly, we could look at every character on the squad, but today we look into what I think to be the best of the squad, and that is George. George is an older Spartan. In fact, he's the oldest in the squad. Abducted as a child, George is one of the only few who survived the intense training to become a Spartan. His biography states that Carter may be the boss, but George is a living, breathing death threat. Nobody messes with George. And that's for good reason. George is a brute and a force of nature. He is 8 feet tall and over 1,000 pounds in his armor and carries a dismounted Che gun to level the battlefield. Yet despite this, he has something rare that most Spartans don't have, compassion. To say that George is a gentle giant is entirely true. Throughout the game, he can be seen calming down and stopping his military mindset to help out civilians caught in the crossfire. This might be chalked up to him fighting for his home planet and doing his very best to save it. Seeing people in need may remind him of why he's fighting in the first place, despite what some of his fellow teammates might say. Big man forgets what he is sometimes. She just lost her father. Of course, to me, what makes George so great is his sacrifice. After hijacking an enemy ship that started an attack on Reach, the timer on the bomb set to destroy the fleet is broken, meaning it's a one-way trip forever detonates this. In this case, it's George. He quickly comes to terms of what has to be done and accepts his fate. He promptly gives your character, Noble Six, his dog tags and carries him to the edge of the ship, tossing him into space for freefall. His last words are... Tell him to make it count. George does make it count, as of course the bomb does go off and the fleet is destroyed. George's sacrifice is complete as he saved his home planet. Or so we thought. In a sad turn of events, that was only one of the ships as the entire alien armada begins to attack his planet. George's tragedy is that he died believing he saved his own planet. Family reunion. Keep them. 
I gave him to you. I'll honor him my own way. George always said he would never leave Reach. <laughs> oh, the big man was sentimental. He gave his life thinking he'd just save the planet. We should all be so lucky. That does it for this week of Digital Digestion, and that was George from Halo Reach. If you want to see any of the characters in the future, let me know down below who you would like to see. I'm your host, Garrett, signing off. Have a good one. KZLX is a student-run radio station where Northwest students have complete freedom during their shifts. KZLX also hosts many radio shows such as Nermageddon, Revive, Day-to-Day -Day Picks, and more. To learn more, visit kzlxfm.com. Dude, Garrett, What's up? check out this Mjolnir fidget Ooh, spinner I got. cool. Dude, I have one kind of close to that. You want to see it? Oh. Maybe have it with me. Yeah, Ready? sure. Uh, look at oh. that. Okay, that thing is massive. I know. You want to hold it? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, come on. It won't hurt. Uh, we'll we'll I mean, trade it if you don't it, like it. Okay, 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 okay. Got okay. it? Oh! Hey. Yeah. This is kind of cool. Dude, what is in this thing? I don't know. I think it's Star. It's Star? What? You want to trade back? Here. Yes, if you don't please. Like it, I like it. Mine's the perfect size anyways. All right, fair enough. Whatever. Float your boat. My name is Gabriel Lozano, and welcome back to 10 out of 10, where we go over all of the best video games that are truly 10 out of 10s. Today, we're going to be going over a Plague Tale Requiem. This sequel continues the story of Amicia and her brother Hugo, and takes place a few months after the first game. As you attempt to survive this plague and rat infested land, you will play as Amicia, and it is your goal to do everything in your power to keep your brother safe, even if it means taking the lives of others to do so. Throughout your nearly 19 hour playthrough, you will constantly be pursued by soldiers and the rats that plague the land. Even though someone's always out to get you, the true enemy in this game is a supernatural force that is causing the plague and allowing billions of rats to literally crumble cities. This supernatural force is known as the Prima Macula, and it is using Amicia's own brother Hugo as its host. Your role as Amicia is to protect your brother and do whatever it takes to find a cure for this unknown disease before it's too late. I can't stress enough how amazing the story of A Plague's Tale is. Even though most of this game is played in a violent, rat-infested world, the true story lies in Amicia and the bond she holds with her brother. As you sneak around, you'll have to avoid being detected by the soldiers looking for you and the billions of man-eating rats. As you get through the game, you'll encounter many new enemies, but you'll also meet many new friends that will aid you on this journey. These new friends can alter your gameplay, and it always keeps the game fresh and fun. Depending on who you're with, it can completely change the way you approach situations. Every level in A Plague Tale Requiem is littered with puzzles and different ways to deal with your enemies. If it's from extinguishing a flame to allow rats to eat them, or maybe just lighting tar on fire to get past the rats, there are always new ways to play. It's working. The farther you get in the game, you'll unlock new weapons like the crossbow, and even new craftables that can be used to defeat your enemies or simply just sneak past them. Crafting and finding resources is a crucial part of this game, and depending on how you choose to approach a certain situation, it can completely change the way the enemies react and how you'll get through the level. On top of this game just having an amazing story and fun gameplay, this game just looks amazing. Every level is extremely detailed, and the graphics really had me surprised with how much they had improved from the last game. A Plague Tale Requiem truly feels like a next-gen game. I had many instances where I took a break from playing and found myself staring at the horizon just to take in how good this game really looks. With A Plague's Tale amazing story, fun gameplay, and great graphics, it's no question why this game is truly a 10 out of 10. 
And that was another episode of 10 out of 10. I hope to see everybody back here next week. Hello, my name is Evan, and welcome back to Price is Free. This week, we are talking about Golgotha, a slow-paced horror game you can beat in an afternoon with a mysterious story, hidden lore, and a well-thought-out, creepy atmosphere. If you are in the mood for a good spoof, then watch out for this game. The entire story takes place in an old abandoned subway from World War II that has been shut down due to a radiation leak. Even before the leak, something was mysterious about the people becoming suicidal or seemingly enraged by nothing, throwing themselves in front of trains, assaulting people they love for no reason. The subway has something deeper going on that meets the eye. Gugolta isn't your average modern horror game like Resident Evil or Outlast. There's no immediate threat and you don't ever see anything for the majority of the game. The rear feeler comes from the sound design of the game. The feeling of something always breathing down my neck, or always just watching me out of my sight. Doors opening on their own, messages written in blood on the walls. Bodies withered to the bones left the rot over the years. I was never given a weapon either, which I never needed, but I always felt defenseless the entire game. The only story is what you read from the newspapers, clippings, and reports which I enjoyed, having to uncover the mystery instead of it just being narrated to me. While the scripted scenes can be a little cheesy, this game more than makes up for it with its immersive loop. The sewers under the subway are thought to lead to answers, but only lead to more questions, bodies, and despair. A downside to me though, is that there wasn't really an ending to the story, or if there was, it was pretty vague and left much to be desired and questioned. Overall, Gagaltha was a great scary game that made me crap myself. Only took me a couple hours to beat, and it's free. I had a pretty good time playing it, even if I was scared for the entire time. Thank you for training in this week for The Price is Free. Make sure to check out Gagaltha on Steam if you have the time and are in need for a good spook. Come back next week to see the next free game. Here at Nerd Central, we give you all the nerdy content you love. So check us out right here on KNWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Mustard's Monthly Mayhem. My name is Jacob Mustard, and I'm your host here to review our second game of this month's free games. Today's review will be over Mafia, the Definitive Edition. Being a remake game is not easy, as Mafia Definitive Edition is based on the 2002 hit video game Mafia, and after some time playing this version, it reminds me a lot of an old-fashioned GTA game. Unlike GTA, the main focus is to play through the story mode where you are following the life of Tommy Angelo, a cab driver turned gangster. This dramatic change of career paths is caused by two men named Sam and Polly who work for the Salieri family. The story takes place in a flashback from all the experiences Tommy had as you relive the rise and fall of the mobster experience. Sam, Polly, Frank, and Sarah are the main characters besides the big boss that Tommy interacts with. The map consists of eight different locations that you will travel to complete jobs for the Salieri family, but be careful as the Morello family will 
oppose you at any and every chance they get, as these two families have been at war for some time now. This game has a ton of attention to detail which provides for a fun playthrough of the main story but also the side quests. It follows the same story as the 2002 edition with changes to all the dialogue and cutscenes. The audio from this game is top notch, from the squealing of tires to the radio playing Louis Armstrong songs and a play by play of a baseball game. Even when you go through the tunnel while listening to the radio it gets faint and scratchy in the middle of said tunnel but as soon as you're out to the other side it's back to clear sounds. The driving in this game is way better than the 2002 game but still makes you feel the 1933 aspect of the city while driving. A nice touch is the white circular imaginary signs that show up while guiding you on your path. There is also a red triangle on the game's speedometer to let the player know the speed limit as one can get pulled over and given a ticket. Pressing and holding the touchpad will enable speed limit control where your car will not be able to go over the speed limit if one chooses. The fighting in this game is good, however nothing sets it apart from the other third person shooter games. Hand to hand combat is another thing that can involve strategic dodges with the follow up right hook or what happens most of the time which is spamming circle to punch. A big critique of this game that I have is that most of the story is told by cutscenes and while yes these are necessary at some points throughout the game none of them are playable. You don't do anything but sit back and listen to the dialogue, and with how often these end up happening, you spend a lot more time listening to these conversations compared to playing the game. That's not to be confused with saying that these cutscenes are bad, they just end up taking a long time to play out. It would be nice if they could include more scenes such as when Polly is driving Sam to the doctor but you are being chased by the police in a job gone wrong. You get to shoot out the back of the car with a Tommy gun fending off the pursuit. A similar issue to the loading screens on the first game we reviewed, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Mafia does take a while to reload from a previous checkpoint or restart the mission completely if you fail or die trying. Overall, this game takes a slower approach than most open map games as they want you to really take in the 1930 city and follow the story. While mostly story driven games are not my favorite to play, this one was quite enjoyable as the cast of characters were all unique and it was fun to hear their interactions as you learned their character. I am going to surprisingly give this game an 8 out of 10 as my initial reaction to downloading this game and previewing Mafia Definitive Edition, I did not think I would enjoy it as much as I did. That is all for this week's review, make sure to like, subscribe, and tune in next week for more reviews. And that's the end of this episode of Gen 2. Did you like it? Well, hit that like button. And hit all the other buttons as well. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. Do you want to try it again? No, dude. That thing was, like, insanely heavy. Like, unbelievably heavy. It is made of a star. How? Okay. How are you holding it, then? I think there's some, like, weird writing. I think it translates to worthy? Worthy. Dude, I can't. I don't know Greek. I don't know. I don't know either. I think it's, yeah, I don't know either. And maybe it's Russian. It could be. Latin? Dude, I don't know. I, I, can, I can barely read English. I found it in a creative. I might be dyslexic.